So this seems a little bit concerning, but Elon Musk, the world's richest man with virtually unlimited sums of money, created a pro-Trump super PAC called America PAC, which supposedly is putting out advertisements telling people that it's going to help them register to vote. But the problem is that that's only partially true. Some people, they will help register to vote if you give them some information. Other people... Not so much. Now, Ben Schwartz of CNBC, who broke the story, uh, found something really suspicious about this pack that's supposedly helping people register to vote. The experience is going to vary greatly depending on where you live. So let me show you what I mean. So this is their voter registration page. They ask you for an email address and postal code. Now I put in a fake email and an Oregon zip code and then clicked proceed. And then I was given a link to Oregon's official voter registration website. And sure enough, it takes me to the official Oregon Secretary of State site where I can actually register to vote. So far, so good, right? But here's where it gets weird. So let's say you're from a different state. A swing state per se, like Pennsylvania, which is really important for this upcoming election. What happens then if you see an ad from America Pack and you click on it thinking that it's going to help you register to vote? Well, I tried it out. I put in another fake email with a Pennsylvania zip code this time, and I was not directed to the Pennsylvania voter registration page. Instead, I was taken to this page where it asks for more personal information, phone number, address, date of birth. And once you enter all of that information and press proceed, you're not taken to the actual page to register to vote in Pennsylvania. Instead, you're given this thank you message and you're not registered to vote. So if you're from a state that's not in play in this election, like Oregon, they will actually help you register to vote, presumably. But if you're from a really important battleground state like Pennsylvania that is in play in this upcoming election, they are presumably just taking your data to use for whatever reason they want. Now, after reporting from Brian Schwartz of CNBC about this went viral, they did make a small change to the website. So now if you see one of their ads that tells you that they're gonna help you register to vote, you're hit with this message. Quote, it was brought to our attention on August 2nd that some people may have been unable to complete the registration process on this website on August 1st and 2nd. If you had any difficulty, please try to complete the registration process again or email info at theamericapack.org for assistance. And I'm sure if you email them for assistance, they'll keep your email then as well, because this is as much a data harvesting organization as it is a super PAC. But as of today, it still doesn't help you complete the voter registration process if you're from a state like Pennsylvania. But I'm assuming this little message is to help them cover their asses. And even though that page still exists, there's no link to their voter registration page on their main website. Now, you have to find it, from an ad. But to be clear, if you actually want to register to vote, you go to vote.gov and that is going to direct you to your state's voter registration website. You don't have to go through an ad or a super PAC to register to vote. But as for what happened to the data that you give them, if you did register to vote through them, well, I mean, you're not registered to vote, that's for sure. Nobody really knows what they're gonna do with it, but keep in mind, this is a pro-Trump super PAC, so one could surmise that they will use your personal information to Trump's benefit somehow. But Ben Schwartz also explains, quote, the America PAC has spent more than $800,000 since early July on digital ads that target voters in the key battleground states of Arizona, Michigan, Georgia, North Carolina, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, according to Ad Impact. The PAC's effort to collect information from people using the idea of voter registration is a critical piece to its plan to make personal contact with these voters. America PAC is focusing on door-to-door -door canvassing in support of Trump, said Brendan Fisher, a deputy executive director at Campaign Finance Watchdog Documented. I think it's safe to assume that the voter data gathered through these digital appeals are going to inform America PAC's canvassing and other political activities, he added. Fisher pointed to the group's privacy policy, which says it can use the data they've collected on other activities and or fundraising campaigns. The PAC's website offers no indication one way or another what the group's political leaning is, but in its federal filings, the group discloses that all of its work is designed to either help Trump or hurt his opponent. Now, to be fair, this isn't the first super PAC to dupe people into giving away their personal information by saying that it's going to help them register to vote. But the difference between this super PAC and other super PACs is that this one was created by the richest person on the planet and has way more power. 
And on top of that, it also, by the way, has the backing of other big tech and crypto oligarchs like Doug Leone and the Winklevoss twins. Now, the expert that Schwartz talked to in this article, Brendan Fisher, says that aside from it just being a data harvesting organization, it is probably going to focus on grassroots organizing and door-to-door -door canvassing. And the reason why he's making that assumption is because the FEC unbeknownst to a lot of us, actually created a new loophole this year with an advisory opinion where now super PACs can directly coordinate with campaigns, but only when it comes to door-to-door -door canvassing. So because of that change, Elon Musk can be a de facto arm of the Trump campaign with this super PAC. Yeah. And we haven't even talked about the fact that Elon Musk also owns a social media company and has been clearly using that social media company to sway the election in multiple ways. For example, he arbitrarily suspended the white dudes for Harris account after they raised millions of dollars for her on a Zoom call. Then he reversed the decision after people sounded off about it. But on top of that, Twitter's AI bot, Grok, spread election misinformation by incorrectly claiming that Kamala Harris wouldn't be on the ballot in nine states since she missed the deadline. So he's already both directly and indirectly using Twitter to tip the scales in Trump's favor. But on top of that, he now has a whole ass super PAC to assist Trump with door-to-door -door campaigning along with data harvesting. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, he's using this social media platform that he owns to broadcast his own dumb political opinions. And Schwartz says that what he's vocalizing on Twitter is the way that this super PAC is framing its advertising. I mean, it makes sense since he owns this super PAC and he created this super PAC. But I mean, listen to what he says, quote, the PAC's ads that have aired on social media platforms also mirror a larger message that Musk pushes out to his 191 million followers on X several times a day. The notion that America is in chaos and voting for Trump over Harris is the only way out. Quote, these PACs have often functioned as the alter ego of whatever billionaire is behind them, said Daniel Weiner, a director of the Brendan Center's elections and government program. There is a concern that Musk is weaponizing that platform to help his preferred candidate in Trump. Trump said Wiener. And I feel like it's an understatement to say that he thinks Trump is the only guy who can save America from chaos for the fact that he literally tweeted, quote, civil war is inevitable. This imbecile has an outsized influence on this election and he can use his platform unchecked, by the way, to spread whatever bullshit he wants or combat the spread of anything that might be damaging to Trump, even if it's truthful. I mean, if a liberal billionaire owned Twitter and behaved in the same way, Republicans would be screaming election interference and we all know it. But when a right wing billionaire does what they say is bad, we're supposed to just sit back and accept it. Ridiculous. Now, the good news is that certain attorneys general from states are investigating how the super PAC collects data after receiving complaints from residents. So hopefully there's going to be some accountability. But the only way to really minimize the influence of this deranged billionaire is to force him to divest from Twitter. Listen, Congress passed a bipartisan bill mandating that TikTok's parent company divest, and at least for now, there's no legal reason why Congress can't do the exact same thing with regard to Twitter. Don't get me wrong, Elon Musk can still buy politicians and hire lobbyists like all other billionaires, but he at least wouldn't have control of a literal social media platform if Congress got him to sell off Twitter. I mean, that platform is popular. It is shaping the perception of reality for so many Americans. It is deeply undemocratic that a billionaire has control over that. No billionaire should have that much power. And that includes Jeff Bezos, by the way, who owns the Washington Post. I think both Democrats and Republicans acknowledge that there are some billionaires they don't like who own massive media companies. And that's bad. It's a threat to democracy. So this isn't just a partisan issue. It's something that affects all of us in a negative way. It affects democracy. So this has to be stopped for the sake of democracy. Elon Musk must be forced to sell off Twitter. But even if he doesn't do that and that never happens, well, he has this super PAC now that can legally coordinate with the Trump campaign. So, um, yeah, story number 1827 about how billionaires are rigging our elections and destroying democracy but i mean by this point you're not surprised if you've been paying attention Woke mom. Mom.